We do have some breaking news to bring you uh, right now, a bit of a scoop uh, this morning. Uh, the NASDAQ is going to be asking the SEC for permission to adopt a new requirement that would make companies listed on its exchange to have at least one woman and one diverse director and also report data on the board's diversity. This is the first major stock exchange to require diversity. And it's the first time, actually, a stock exchange, a major stock exchange, has made any kind of requirement, uh, quote unquote, beyond the law. Um, this will happen in a phased approach over two to four years. Uh, every board, and there's 3,000 companies, more than 3,000 companies on the NASDAQ, would be required effectively to have at least one woman and one uh, minority uh, that could also be uh, LGBT. Um, if you don't have uh, one or both of those uh, requirements, you would be forced to effectively write a letter explaining why you don't. Um, of course, this raises lots of questions about the role of stock exchanges. Uh, we've seen Goldman Sachs and others uh, discuss or, or try to do things like this thing. For example, Goldman Sachs won't take a company public uh, without at least one uh, diverse member. But uh, big implications because it also raises questions about whether stock exchanges will uh, try to address other, quote unquote, social and increasingly economic issues. Um, the NASDAQ says that this is not uh, an issue that they wanted to take on. They had hoped that the SEC would do this uh, on their own and actually would be able to do it in a more holistic way in terms of being able to uh, make such a requirement, not just for public companies, but also for private companies, either owned by private equity or, or otherwise. Uh, the state of California, as you know, is now requiring at least one woman on every board. Interestingly, of the 3,000-plus companies on the NASDAQ, 75 percent of those companies would be impacted by this, which is to say that 75 percent of the companies that are on NASDAQ today either don't have a woman on their board or don't have somebody uh, that would be considered uh, a minority. So uh, big questions about what this all means, but uh, a major step in the conversation uh, that we've been having around ESG and, of course, the disclosure requirements. And as I said, there are going to be lots of companies that are going to have to uh, change the makeup to some degree of their boards over time. Yeah, Andrew, that was going to be my question. How many companies did this uh, affect? And I guess if it's 25 percent of 3,000, that's 750 companies that will have to either change it or write a letter. No, um, no, it's 75 percent. It's, it's 75 percent would not qualify. Don't? Of the 3,000 will, wow. will be impacted. So about 75 percent of the companies today, if you can believe this, in, in America today, 75 percent of the companies either don't have a minority on their board today or don't have a, a, a female on the board today. And so they would, they, mm -hmm. would, they would effectively have to either write a letter explaining why. They would have, by the way, and, and some people will say this is too long a period, but they would have two to four years uh, to effectively uh, bring a female and a minority member onto the board. Um, and well, the, I guess the point there is that NASDAQ is trying to give them a lot of runway and time to find the right people if, in fact, they don't already um, fit that, quote, unquote, requirement. Not only find the right people, but also to make sure that you're doing it through the proxy statement, not forcing these companies to create extra board seats before you can fill them, I guess, norm, under the normal time of filling some of these things. Yeah, the, the NASDAQ is asking for permission to do this. Do they need to? Um, my understanding is they do need to do it. There will be a comment period uh, that would be required. Um, of course, what, what the NASDAQ says is that they don't want to be a gatekeeper on this. What they want to do is provide more disclosure. Um, as, as I said, you could technically qualify and not be delisted by the exchange if you were to provide disclosure and a letter explaining why you, you have sought not to uh, fulfill the, the quote-unquote requirement. And the idea, they say, is that the role of the NASDAQ should be uh, to help investors and to help investors better understand what's going on inside companies from a governance perspective. And at a minimum, it is the disclosure uh, that, that would be required. It'll be very interesting to see whether the New York Stock Exchange uh, follows suit uh, with, this, uh, with this requirement uh, or whether uh, this becomes a, a differentiator, uh, for example, in terms of how the two exchanges compete against each other. 
and whether this gets taken uh, into other <laughs> spheres, uh, for example, on, on, the clim on climate or other things in terms of disclosures that could get required uh, or, or be asked of companies uh, in terms of their sustainable plans. So uh, a big uh, decision and move. Uh, lots of companies and lawyers for their companies are going to be looking uh, at this and trying to understand what it all means. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.